Well, this is a treat as we mark Black History Month, a chance to get to know four-time Grammy-winning music maverick Terry Lynn Carrington, born and raised in Medford. WBC's Courtney Cole visited her at the Berkeley College of Music to talk about how she got started and how she's using her talents to transform the culture of jazz. For as long as she can remember, Terry Lynn Carrington has loved music. Uh, I started playing saxophone first at five, and then my father would bring up his father's drum kit from the basement and set them up and play them sometimes. So I think I was always attracted to them. The Medford native started playing the drums at the age of seven, started her professional music career at just 10 years old, and received a full scholarship to the Berkeley College of Music at the age of 11. As for her love for jazz, she says she has her father to thank for that. He played jazz throughout, like while I was in the womb, I was hearing it. Her mother, grandmother, and grandfather all played instruments too. And then my grandfather played drums with people when they came to Boston. Uh, Sammy Davis Jr., Chew Berry, um, Duke Ellington. After three semesters at Berkeley, her courage and her talent would take her to the Big Apple. My mentor, Jack DeJohnette, said, if you want to find out how good you are, put yourself in the environment where the competition is the greatest, and then that's how you find out. And you, you'll either sink or swim. And swim she did. She spent four years living, working, and learning the ins and outs of the drums before moving to L.A. Within a day or two, I did an audition for the Arsenio Hall show and um, got that. Back to perform Human Revolution is Terry Lynn Carrington. She's played with Dizzy Gillespie, Stan Getz, Shaka Khan, Al Jarreau, and Wayne Shorter, just to name a few. Do you have a favorite artist or favorite project that you've worked on if it's not an artist? I had the same joy and satisfaction playing the most creative music in the world with Herbie Hancock as I did playing a party with Bill Withers. Even with the start of her band Social Science, four Grammy Awards, not to mention being the first woman to win a Grammy Award in the jazz instrumental category. We're trying to set new standards. Her love for music would ultimately bring her back to Berkeley, where she later received an honorary doctorate. I think after about 10 years of teaching here, I actually started listening more, and my heart and mind opened up. Which led her to create the Institute of Jazz and Gender Justice at Berkeley. If you love the music, you want to see it reach its fullest potential, and it will never reach its fullest potential unless we have this kind of diversity uh, with the people that create it. As for what's next for Carrington, she's working on the second edition of New Standards, a book of 100 songs all by women composers, something she created when she realized women were underrepresented in the music selection students learned to play. Courtney Cole, WBZ News. I mean, she was absolutely a pioneer. And now yeah. you have these up-and-coming musicians who can look to her and see what's possible with that kind of work. I just love when I see a story about somebody who loved something when they were so young and that they've done so well. You imagine what that means to students who look at the landscape and think, oh, this is really hard, and she shows you it can be done. All right. Just